Hello friends, in this class let's start the new topic that is liquid crystals and their types. Well, liquid crystals are the most important materials for display technologies. It is the technology that drives the liquid crystal displays or the LCDs. So let's begin. <music> Liquid crystals, as the name suggests, is made up of two words, liquid and crystal. Liquid means it is in the form of a fluid and a crystal means it has some particular characteristic that is a prominent characteristic of a crystal. That could be a sharp melting point, a sharp, sharp melting point, fixed structure, layered structure, so on and so forth. So let's see how and where this concept came into picture. If I take a solid, and we know that if I heat the solid, a solid on heating gives rise to a liquid. So hence a liquid will be formed. Well, is the process reversible? Yes, the process is reversible. If I take the liquid and if I cool it, I will be getting a solid again. So this process was generally observed. So this was the process which was generally observed until the year 1888 where an Austrian botanist came up with a chemical which he had to heat. Now, during his course of experiment, well, he did not do this to give rise to a new component which shows a different characteristics. Accidentally, he heated that material and on heating, he found that a material goes with an intermediate state which is between the solid and the liquid and hence, this concept of liquid crystals came into picture. So, what he observed that the solid on heating gave rise to a new material which he called this as liquid crystal or an intermediate state which on heating then yielded a liquid. Now, again, to find out that is the process reversible or not, he again back traced it wherein he took a liquid and cooled it. So on cooling he again found that same liquid crystal and on cooling the liquid crystal further he came up with the same solid again. So this was the concept of liquid crystals. So in this chapter we will be mainly focusing on the liquid crystal. Now we all know that in the prerequisites we have covered crystal physics. So let's study the same thing in crystal structure. So if I take the crystal structure study, I'll be having initially the solid was in the crystal form. As we all know, solids are crystalline in nature. Now we are not taking that amorphous part of solid for this reason that we are only talking about liquid crystals. So when I talk about crystal, I want to say I'm talking about a crystalline solid. So now coming to the point, if I take a crystal structure which has good amount of orientation and all the molecules as you can see are well aligned. If I increase the temperature, it takes the form of a liquid crystal wherein you can see the order is distorted. Here the order gets distorted. Well if I increase the temperature further, the order would be distorted further and hence it would turn out to be in the state of liquid. So here it was the crystal state and then it gave rise to a liquid crystal which was completely observed as a new phenomenon. And then of course on increasing the temperature of the liquid we got rise to a liquid state. Now if you talk about the opacity, now what does the opacity means? Well opacity is nothing but as the ability to see through. So crystal did not had any opacity whereas liquid crystal had somewhat opacity whereas in the liquid the opacity was the maximum. So I can say that if I take a crystal and I keep on increasing its temperature generally the opacity would increase. Now nevertheless that is one of the aspect of increasing the temperature of a crystal structure whereas what a liquid crystal is? A liquid crystal is nothing but as an intermediate stage between the crystal and the liquid. So I would define 
Liquid crystals are substances that exhibit a phase of matter that has properties between those of a conventional liquid and those of a crystal. So the property of a liquid crystal is nothing but as the properties which is between the conventional liquid and crystal or a solid. Now, in the liquid crystal state, the molecules can move about and therefore lack positional order. As you can see, the positional order of molecules is completely lost which was present in the crystal structure. However, the molecules strongly interact and are arranged and oriented in a crystal-like way. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means that in general, if you see the molecules randomly, you will see that their orientation has changed or the positional order has changed. But if I, in general, look the orientation as this is oriented in this way, this is oriented in this way, this is oriented in this way, this in this way and if I check the orientation of all the molecules, the resultant would of course be in the vertical direction. So this means that because of the disorderness, the molecules have distorted. But when I take the resultant orientation of all the molecules, I would be getting a direction. And hence this line comes into picture. They have a crystal-like way in orientation. And this is the reason why they possess long range orientational order. Well, this is the most important point you have to know that they possess long range orientational order. They do not have short range orientational order. Why? Because in short, it means that you are taking one molecule into picture and then comparing it the same with the crystal. So I want to say, if I'm comparing this molecule, this is my orientation with this molecule and this is my orientation. So if I'm doing a comparative study between this and this molecule, of course there would be a change in the alignment. Well, but if I do a general check on the entire molecule, I would be not finding any differences between them. So I can say that they have long range orientational order which means that if I take all the molecules together, then the orientational order will be in one particular direction, but not taken them in fragments. Similarly, these liquid crystals are further classified as pneumatic phase, the first type. Pneumatic means thread-like in Greek. Pneumatic is a Greek word which means thread-like structure, which means suspended. Now, the diagram looks like this. As you can see, there is no particular order. Well, the order doesn't mean that they are not aligned. The order means that they cannot be predicted. The structures cannot be predicted or the next molecule where it would be cannot be predicted. However, they are all suspended as like what threads are. If you try, this is the ceiling and if you try to suspend all the ropes, the orientation of all the ropes would be downwards. Why? Because this is what the nature is. So similarly, the pneumatic phase follows the same and hence the name pneumatic. All the molecules are suspended in disordered manner with all having the same orientation which is vertical and pointing in the same direction. So the important point is they are disordered which means the position of the molecule next is not yet defined. However, they all have the same orientation which is vertical. They are all suspended vertically and pointing in the same direction. Now, because of no degree of order, it does not have layered structure. Now, what do you mean by layered structure? Well, a layered structure is in wherein if these are the molecules, all the molecules in this level layer would have the same orientation. But since the next molecule which is about to come is cannot be predicted, I cannot have this layered structure in pneumatic phase. Why? Because of no degree of order. 
Now, let's take a look into the next type, which is somatic phase. Now, somatic means soap-like in Greek. Now, soap-like means it has a surface which is slippery or it's basically, if I take a soap holder and there's a soap placed over it, and if I drop some water, what will happen? Of course, there would be some scum which is going to form with the help of water and soap. If I observe the scum under a microscope, the structure would be similar to that of the somatic phase and hence the name somatic. Diagram looks like this. Now, here you can see they are in a well-defined order and layered as well. As you can see, this is layer 1, this is layer 2, this is layer 3 and all the layers are aligned. So here, all the molecules are suspended in an ordered manner with all having the same orientation. Here, the structure is ordered with same orientation, again that is vertical and pointing in the same direction. So the only difference between the nematic and the somatic is in nematic we do not have an ordered manner whereas in somatic we have in an ordered manner. Now because of this degree of order we have a layered structure here. Now a layered structure as you can see all the molecules in the same layer will have the same orientation and same suspension. Now, this could vary with respect to the layer, but in the same layer, my orientation is going to be the same. So, this is the particular characteristic of a somatic phase. Now, let's talk about the third one, which is the most important, that is cholesteric phase or it is also called as mesophase. Now, it has a combined properties of nematic phase and somatic phase. It possesses the properties of nematic phase as, as well as somatic phase. So, the properties of nematic phase would be having no order and somatic phase would be having a layered order. So, the structure looks like this. As you can predict from the structure, the structures in respective layers are random. Whereas, in the same layer, the molecules are aligned in a given proper order as you can see this could be layer one so in this layer one all the molecules will have approximately the same orientation whereas in this layer all the molecules would be having the same orientation so this is the property which they have developed from the somatic phase the property of having in layers and what property of pneumatic phase has been deployed here? The property that all the molecules are randomly oriented. Here you can see this, let's say suppose if this is my corresponding axis, so this would be the angle of twist or the angle by which my molecules have twisted. Whereas here, if I take this as my principal axis, here, this is the angle of my twist. So, this angle of twist is randomly provided and this is the characteristic from pneumatic phase. So, here I can say that all the molecules in the same layer are in ordered manner. Not all the molecules in the entire crystal or the entire liquid crystal, but all the molecules of the same layer are in an ordered manner with all having same orientation and pointing in the same direction. So basically the cholesteric phase or the mesophase is the most important phase which is nothing but is the combination of somatic phase as well as pneumatic phase. However, each layer will be twisted by some angle as this is the property by which it has derived from pneumatic phase giving it a disordered in phase but not in the layer. As you can see there are certain disorder in the phase but not in the layer. In a given layer all the molecules will have the same orientation and same order whereas in overall molecules if you see the order is distorted. So this is all about mesophase and cholesteric phase. Now let's do a comparative study. 
So if we do a comparative study of the liquid phases, we'll plot them as pneumatic phase, somatic phase and cholesteric phase or meso phase. Now, here you can see the orientation is random. In somatic phase, the orientation within the layers is uniform and cholesteric phase is nothing but as combination of somatic phase and pneumatic phase. So I can say if I add pneumatic phase with somatic phase, the resultant is cholesteric phase. And this is what it is used in everyday life. So the which makes cholesteric phase as the most important phase in crystal phases. Now, in the next class, we'll study the application of these liquid crystal phases or the applications of the materials showing the properties of liquid crystals, which is used in the liquid crystal display or the LCDs. Till then, thank you.